Hi everyone, welcome to a day in the life of the Salesforce Supermam. We are, this is the second of our webinar series and we are interviewing um, Lucy Flyman. Um, so Lucy is a Salesforce project manager at the um, School of Social Entrepreneurs and she graduated from the course in February 18. And um, I work for Economic Change and as part of, and also part of the Salesforce Supermums program and the head of customer success. So just to tell you a little bit about the Salesforce Supermums program, the reason why we started the Supermums program was to empower mums back into work through training, mentoring, work experience and job placements. And we launched the program in November 2016 by Heather Black, who's the MD of Economic Change, which is a social um, enterprise and we're a Salesforce consultancy which implements Salesforce into nonprofits and charities. 66 mums have signed up to the course and we also have a couple of dads who are also doing the program. Now with regards to the backgrounds of people who have done this program, they come from a variety of different backgrounds. We've got mums who are in IT, marketing, financial, sales, teaching, legal, and a lawyer and another one who's a medical who's come from the medical profession who was originally a doctor who's decided to upskill into um, IT. Our regular web webinars aim to inspire, inform and educate mums about what the Salesforce ecosystem can offer and this is just to tell you a little bit about the Salesforce ecosystem. So Salesforce you can use it in the marketplace for communities, for financial analytics, for sales, service, marketing, and the various platforms and apps that connect to Salesforce. So by 2020, Salesforce and its ecosystem of customers and partners will create over 1.9 million jobs worldwide, 300,000 job postings for Salesforce staff daily, and the average annual salary in dollars is $80,000. So with regards to Salesforce, there are various progression routes that you can go within Salesforce. So you could start as a junior um, administrator, so where you're working under a senior administrator or developer, um, working on the admin um, updates, um, and also as a various support desk um, roles. And then from there you can progress to a senior administrator. Um, and um, you know a business analyst or project manager or developer so Lucy's background she was a project manager which she can talk through in more detail um, and you know how Salesforce working as a Salesforce admin can enhance her skill set so there are lots of various options with regards to different progression routes that you can take with regards to various job opportunities, there are job there are opportunities everywhere you look within Salesforce. So there are 100,000 plus customers using Salesforce, 20,000 plus nonprofits and charities using Salesforce, um, and also with regards to Salesforce, have a large ecosystem of partners and ISV, and you're looking at 2,200 um, clients that um, you know that are always looking for Salesforce administrators. This was an interesting um, uh, stats that I found on, a, on the latest uh, talent ecosystem for Salesforce and it's showing the gender diversity. So, you know, you can have a look there and you can see how many, um, you know, Salesforce administrators are female and how many are male and then also consultants, developers and, you know, Salesforce technical architects. So there's a big push with regards to Salesforce in closing the gender gap and getting more women into um, IT and a lot of companies are targeted to get more women into IT. Also, with regards to the demand for Salesforce talent, it's outpacing supply. So, if you have a look at the um, the established markets, you can see where the you know these are how many experts. Is if you're looking at the administrator side, they're just over um, you know 12,410 experts um, in Salesforce as administrators, and there are just under 20,000 open positions. So, you can see there's a big demand for Salesforce administrators. So moving on to our interview with um, with Lucy, um, who's our Salesforce super mum. Um, Lucy, do you mind telling us a little bit about yourself and your past career and your circumstances before doing the Salesforce super mums program? Sure. And just to say first, hello everyone. It's really lovely to be here today. And for me, the the super mums course was a really important part of my journey. So it's great to be able to just share some of that. So before I did the super mums course, I have worked in the non-profit or charity sector, doing a number of roles from project management to case working with clients. Um, everywhere I've been, I've been involved in databases and collecting data because I really like to know what's going on. And so initially I used 
um, Microsoft Access for that. And I developed skills um, self-taught, which I used in all my roles. So um, that was kind of part of my journey. And I was getting very much aware that the way I used the Microsoft Access was um, was not as the world was becoming, it was much more online now and where we were able to use it much more um, within a network and in-house and there were much more limitations with that. So that was part of my journey. And then also I got to a point really of, of wanting to do something different and not really knowing what that was gonna be. And so um, for me, when I found out about Salesforce, that, that felt like quite a good match for my, my skills and, and also my interests. Oh, brilliant. And how did you find out about the Salesforce Supermums program? So for me, um, it's actually my husband. He's He works in a charity and they'd brought Salesforce in and they had a Supermum actually working um, on the project for them. And when he found out about Salesforce and what it did and um, all about the course, he came home and said, Lucy, you need to look at this because this would press a lot of your buttons. And I have to say, I, I love the product. There are limitations with everything but for me it has so much um, possibilities and working in the charity sector uh, having seen small charities struggling to find ways of collecting data and monitoring data uh, and with the free free licenses they give out it means it's a real option so for me it was, it was quite attractive. Oh brilliant and do you think you need to have a technical background to be able to do the Salesforce Supermums course? No on my cohort we had a real range of um, people from different backgrounds, from the medical profession, from all kinds of different parts of, of the work backgrounds. And really, I think the skills, you've got to love problem solving and you've got to really like to, um, I, I guess it's like it's a service, you're helping a, a charity or business to, to be the best they can be. And and to, to desire to create something and sort out systems and problems to, to to get the best results. And so really it's more about having those desires, I think, than actually having an IT background. It's very easy to learn. Um, sometimes the concepts can take a little bit of getting your head around, but the, the training is brilliant. Um, the Superman's course room is very helpful because you got support from um, the, the trainer and through the work experience, but also with Salesforce, there's a lot of free material, there's free trailheads, there's a community online where you can ask questions. And I normally find that someone's already asked the question that I have. So the ability to find answers and to, to, to learn what you need is really easy. Oh, brilliant. And what research did you do about Salesforce, Sarah, before you did the course? I have to say very little, in that I, I wasn't really looking. I was looking for something new, but I wasn't sure what that was. And so um, I didn't look around at the other options. For me, once I heard about Salesforce and saw the product and found out about the Supermums course, it was really a case of I could quickly do this. So I signed up and I started within a couple of weeks. Uh, it was a very quick decision. I felt it would, whether it led to a career or not, it would be a really good skill to have uh, and that I could add to my CV. So from that perspective alone, I thought it was worth doing. What I actually found was before the end of the course, I'd been invited to an interview and I'd been found a job. So it was it, that part was incredibly easy too. But um, it was, um, it, the attraction was how, it was a six month course, it could be easily done. I worked part time, I could do the extra hours. It felt like it was an easy, quick decision to make. Excellent. And you said you were working part time while you were doing the course. How many days were you working? So I worked three days and then I juggled the the, the extra, the course hours. And I have a, an, a son who is, he's towards the end of primary school now. So uh, it was a juggle, even with the 16 hours. And I found that sometimes I could work while commuting and sometimes it wasn't quite so easy and it depended on the task. So it felt like quite a race for the six months. There was yeah. a lot of information to learn and also work got a bit busy at one point. So um, I wasn't able to give as much as I, I needed to, but the course was really understanding. And um, now looking back, it makes a lot more sense. But at the time it felt like a lot of information to, to really get my head around. But 
I needed that in hindsight and the deadlines for me and the weekly um, needing to to accomplish tasks and do trailheads was really helpful for me actually um, learning what I needed to learn. I, I worked well with deadlines and so it gave me that deadline to push me into action. Oh, perfect and having a structure you know definitely helps and knowing mm -hmm. what your homework is and what you need to do each week because the nice thing is with regards to each trailhead or any homework it would give you a timeline so it would say this will take you 45 minutes or an hour so you you know especially with working you could see when you could fit it into your day. Yeah definitely. And what are you doing now? So I now work for a charity called the School for Social Entrepreneurs. It's a great place to work. I love being there, I love the environment. I'm really enjoying the job. So I am the Salesforce project manager and I manage their Salesforce system and development that we're looking at. So my days are very varied. I have a, a number of things going on. So there'll be problems to sort out that have just arisen in the development that we're looking to, to build. And so I'm researching what they could look like. I'm looking at the new releases to see what exciting features are coming out and how we can utilize those within the, the, the system we have. So there's lots of lots of things going on. Um, what I love is that it's very varied. There's lots of problems to solve. And I, I love it when I, I find a solution that really helps people in their jobs and it saves them time. And um, a few, I had a couple of meetings last week when I was able to show some new features and just to see the smiles on the face of the staff going, that would really help me, that's great. So those things for me give me real buzz and um, yeah, I'm loving it. Oh, excellent, that's great news. And uh, you recently got your Salesforce admin certification, mm -hmm. which is an internationally recognized certification. You know, what's next with learning and development? <laughs> well, I'm not telling another one quite yet. <laughs> They're quite a lot of work. But what I am finding is I am learning new things all the time. So. For me, it's really looking at where my work in Salesforce takes me. I'm learning a lot about communities at the moment. So it may be that I choose to, to focus on that. So um, I'm learning because of my need to develop the system and to see how I can take that forward. And all of those developments require new knowledge for me. And so there's a continual need to learn. But also um, I want to, to go in essence where the job needs me to go so if I end up doing a lot on communities then I'll focus on that um, so yeah we'll see. Oh, fantastic and I mean to ask you your job that you're working at the moment is that full-time or part-time? This is part-time and um, from a flexibility perspective it's great so I wanted to work more flexibly I, I have a, a son who needs um, taxi service now to various different places and commuting was really becoming difficult so I now get to work a day a week at home the organization I work for is really flexible and yeah it, it's made quite a difference to my life. Oh fantastic and would you recommend this course to other people? I really would uh, I, it's a great course for me it really pushed me into action and learning the work experience is excellent and I've learned not only how to, to develop Salesforce, but from a project management perspective, just to, to see how um, we were managed and the tools that we use, I've now taken on board with what I'm doing too. So in so many levels, it's been really helpful. Oh, fantastic. No, brilliant. Great. Thanks so much for that, Lucy. That was brilliant. Okay. So moving on, like Lucy um, was saying, you know, with regards to Salesforce, um, you know, career, there are various certification tracks that you can do. So Lucy has just become an, a Salesforce administrator certified, but there's an advanced administrator. You know, there are lots of new um, paths that you talk, that you can do with regards to certifications. So Lucy was mentioning, I think if you look down by the implementation experts, you know, there's a community cloud consultant. So that might be her next certification that she might do. But I mean, if you've got a marketing background you could specialize in the marketing cloud part art um, you know otherwise going down the developer route or becoming an advanced administrator so there are lots of different routes likewise if you've got a financial background you know sage um, connects to Salesforce so what you could do is get your administrator become a Salesforce administrator and then become a sage consultant so you'd be building um, you know you'd they would tie in really nicely with the financial background 
there are lots of different paths and you're welcome to have a conversation with me and we can chat about the different paths within you know the Salesforce ecosystem. Lucy also mentioned with regards to trailheads. So trailheads is an interactive way of learning Salesforce. And by the time you finish the course um, on the trailhead, you normally round about the Expeditioner um, badge, which is the second to last one, where you've normally got about 50 badges. Um, and that is where you, um, you're going on. There's lots of information where you're reading, but then multiple choices. But also you have a Salesforce developer org, which shows you step by step how to do things within Salesforce. And the great thing is you're getting badges. So it's great to be able to add on to your CV. With regard to the program, you know, your this is just to explain a little bit about the learning journey. So for the first first three months of the course, you're oh. learning all the theory side of Salesforce, and then the last three months, you actually get hands-on experience working with one of our Salesforce project managers, building a charity Salesforce CRM system from beginning to end, and then you obviously get to take your admin certification, which is internationally recognised, so you can work anywhere in the world, which is always a good thing because I know that's something I'm always looking at when I'm doing, um, you know when I'm looking at upskilling. So with regards to the program, it is an investment in your future. So um, these are the castings for the program and our next course is starting on the 5th of November and we run the program four times a year. So it's November, then February, then May, then September and then November. But also this course is all designed around the school holidays. So when there's, um, you know, when there's school holidays or half terms, there's no coursework. So it gives you an opportunity to catch up if you are falling behind with regards to your work. And also with regards to doing the course, um, you know, if you've had a career break, you know, it's great to be able to add this onto your CV. You know, I work with um, the mum who've done the program um, and work on a really good CV. You've got trailheads to add onto your CV, plus certifications, and you've got a real work, you know, you've gained real work experience. And, you know, it's amazing just watching mums. I don't know how Lucy felt, but just with your confidence just growing in the course. So we also bring in career counsellors. Um, to help you but I think you know it's just once you start you know understanding and you're doing it you're like oh I can actually do this so I don't know what your thoughts were from your confidence Lucy yeah and I think it it did help we worked a lot with our peers so there's a lot of joint learning which is really great but also the work experience to actually do a project and see it being delivered and the customer really happy yeah it, it's it really does boost what you can do and you, you feel you've achieved something. Yeah, and it, you're just kind of getting thrown into a whole new area because at the end of the, the project, you're actually training the client that you built the system on and you're like, oh, I can actually do this. So it definitely helps, you know, from a confidence point of view. So that's great. So yeah, thank you very much, um, Lucy, for joining us today. I don't know if you have anything else you'd like to add, Lucy, or if you think you've covered everything. No, thank you very much. And I hope um, this is helpful as well as you think through what to do and whether this is the right course. Yeah, definitely. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.